Dear viewers, Welcome back to our channel. I bet few people know how torpedoes are launched, it's quite complex, far from just pressing a button to shoot them out of the launch tube. Yes, torpedo launching is not as simple as pressing a button, it involves complex loading, stabilizing, and launching processes. Within the narrow confines of a submarine, loading torpedoes must be done skillfully and flexibly. With technological advancements, the traditional high-pressure gas propulsion method has been replaced by water ramjet engines, which use water's force to push the torpedo out of the launch tube, and then the torpedo's own propulsion system drives it forward. However, the scientific principles involved in this process, such as water pressure balance and hydrodynamics, are not widely known. In today's video, we'll test our audience's knowledge with a few questions. 1. How is the immense pressure of water overcome during torpedo launch from a submarine? 2. How does the water ramjet engine improve the depth and efficiency of torpedo launches compared to traditional high-pressure gas propulsion? 3. What is the principle behind the repetitive compression and tearing of target objects by the bubbles generated when a torpedo explodes underwater, and how is this effect related to torpedo design? Firstly, loading torpedoes into a submarine is not an easy task. On surface vessels, it's simple, you can use a crane to load them into the launcher on the deck. However, submarine torpedo tubes are inside, and not only torpedoes but also cruise missiles and mines usually go through tubes for launch, making them multifunctional. Due to the limited space in submarines, they typically adopt two methods, first, the torpedo is pushed into the submarine's torpedo tube like loading a gun barrel, then it's sent back to the torpedo stowage rack in reverse through the torpedo loading mechanism. Both Soviet and Chinese submarines have used this method. Second, the torpedo is inserted diagonally into the submarine and then maneuvered into the torpedo tube, which is how the United States loads torpedoes. After inserting diagonally, submariners rotate the crane to position the torpedo horizontally, then move it onto the rack, and finally slowly push it into the launch tube. The two protrusions on the torpedo are devices similar to fixed rings, called torpedo rings, and the torpedo's raised ears fit into these openings to prevent it from swinging around inside the launch tube. Submarines not only tilt left and right in the sea, but also have two fixed devices inside the torpedo tube. When the torpedo is pushed in, the device near the exit of the torpedo tube is lowered and remains motionless, while the device at the back is lowered after the front one, ensuring the torpedo is securely held inside. Now, is it time to press the button to launch? Is it like launching a missile from a ship, using high temperature and high pressure gas flow to push the torpedo out? Impossible! This is underwater, traditional torpedo launching uses jet propulsion for power, using high-pressure compressed air to give the torpedo a forceful push. As for this high-pressure gas device, aside from anything else, just the sound of the release of high-pressure air can startle you, and the vibration is significant, not much different from firing a big cannon. This method is limited in its launch depth by water pressure and can only launch within 100 meters because the water pressure at sea is extremely high. You have to exceed this water pressure to launch the torpedo after diving deep underwater. Submarines don't have so much pressurized space, if you want to create such high pressure, the structure would be severely limited. The technology invented before World War II gradually retreated from naval warfare a century later after enduring. Currently, the most widely used method in navies is the water ramjet engine. It goes through several steps, first, Open a water tank on the submarine and fill the torpedo tube with water, while simultaneously opening a valve to let out air. Air is not being released from the submarine, it's being imported into the boat for crew use. When the water is almost full in the pipeline and about to overflow the valve at the top, sensors on the pipeline trigger, indicating the water is full. Then, close the water tank and exhaust vent. At this point, the torpedo is completely submerged in water, but it faces the same problem as compressed air. The external water pressure is very high, so to launch it, you need to exceed this water pressure. Therefore, the submarine opens the third valve, the water pressure valve, which instantly balances the water pressure inside the launch tube with the external pressure. 
Now that the pressure is balanced, where does the high pressure water for launching the torpedo come from? It's already prepared for you. Open the fourth valve, and the high pressure water instantly enters the bottom of the torpedo, then lift the two fixed devices. The torpedo will be quickly ejected under water pressure, and once it's out, the torpedo's battery starts the propeller, propelling the torpedo forward at high speed. To be honest, many netizens don't know there's a propeller on the torpedo, they think it's all about being pushed out forcefully. But when considering its short range and inability to maneuver at the end, there must be another way. After being launched, torpedoes generally use wake homing or fiber optic guidance. I've covered both methods in previous videos. Although they may seem outdated, they are extremely shocking when attacking targets. One torpedo is enough to cut a destroyer in half, something missiles can't achieve, because the density of water is hundreds of times that of air, and the bubbles generated when it explodes underwater continuously compress and then tear apart the target. Returning to the topic, after launching the torpedo, the final valve in the launch tube is open to drain the water from the tube into the water tank, while filling the tube with air, ready for the next torpedo to be loaded. Finally, let's talk about the evolution of torpedo launching methods in submarines, which has gone through several generations of evolution. From the initial self-propelled torpedoes relying on their own power, to dry launch, and then to water pressure balance launch, and in the future, there will be electromagnetic catapults, etc., each with completely different launching principles. As for the issue of water backflow, it has never been a problem. I'll now introduce them one by one. First generation, self-propelled torpedoes. During World War I, submarines were invented and deployed in battle, and torpedoes were their main means of attack, although cannons were used before. The early torpedoes were primitive, when launched, they would let sea water in, and then the torpedo would start its own propeller and swim out, hence called self-propelled torpedoes. At this time, the torpedo structure was simple, the speed was slow, and the range was very short. Submarines had to approach closely for launch, which posed a significant risk. However, they were quickly phased out. Second generation, dry high-pressure launch, somewhat similar to today's cold-launched missiles, except its torpedoes being launched, not missiles. The torpedo tube is connected to a high-pressure gas valve. To launch a torpedo, the pressure inside the torpedo tube is first adjusted to be equal to the seawater pressure, then the sealed cover of the torpedo tube is opened simultaneously with the high-pressure gas valve, introducing high-pressure gas to push the torpedo out in one go. This method was mostly used during World War II, providing torpedoes with a good initial velocity, thus extending their range. However, a drawback is that launching torpedoes generates a large amount of gas, which could expose the submarine's position. Also, during World War II, the range of direct-running torpedoes was not too far, so if an attack failed, the submarine would likely face depth charge attacks. After all, direct-running torpedoes could only be launched within periscope depth, and once a submarine was exposed, it was extremely dangerous. Therefore, designers specifically designed a gas recovery device to start recovering high-pressure gas when the torpedo was three-quarters launched, reducing the number of bubbles, but it still didn't fundamentally solve the problem. Third-generation, water-pressure balance torpedo launch, after World War II, submarines experienced rapid development, and direct-running torpedoes were completely inadequate, especially with the demand for submarines to dive deeper and deeper, as the naval competition between the United States and the Soviet Union required submarines to operate at depths of 100 to 300 meters, and at one point, Soviet submarines were diving as deep as 1,000 meters. The bubbles generated by traditional dry launching couldn't meet the requirement for submarine stealth, so the United States pioneered the development of water pressure balance torpedo launch systems. The principle is similar to dry launch, with a piston added between the high-pressure gas cylinder and the torpedo tube, converting high gas pressure into high hydraulic pressure to propel the torpedo out. During launch, the torpedo tube closure cover is open to allow seawater to fill the tube and achieve internal and external balance, then the pressure valve is open to drive the piston with high pressure, quickly pushing seawater and the torpedo out of the tube together. 
This launch method allows submarines to launch torpedoes at any depth since the water pressure inside and outside the torpedo tube is balanced. Currently, this is the mainstream launch method for most submarines, such as the Soviet Typhoon and the American Los Angeles class, which all use this hydraulic launch method. Third generation subtype, water ramjet launch, the French, known for their independent approach to weapon development, didn't simply copy the third generation torpedo launch system, instead, they used a smaller volume water ramjet launch system. French nuclear submarines are also the smallest, saving internal space. The French method is similar to the water pressure balanced method, except that instead of driving seawater directly, a piston is pushed against the rear of the torpedo, which then pushes the torpedo out. It's more aggressive. The advantage of this method is that it takes up less space, but the downside is that it exerts too much force on the torpedo, so the rear structure of the torpedo must be designed carefully. It's the quintessential French style. Only French Agosta and Ruby's class submarines use this method. Fourth generation, air turbine pump launch, this method is an improvement over the water pressure balanced method, using a rotating air turbine pump instead of a massive piston system, effectively reducing the volume of the launch system. During launch, it's similar to the water pressure balanced method, where high pressure drives the turbine pump to rotate, then the rotating pump rapidly sucks seawater into the torpedo tube, and then ejects the torpedo. This launch mode is particularly useful for medium and small submarines. Fifth generation, electromagnetic launch, this is a very high-end launch method, but currently, all countries are still in the research stage, and the cost is likely staggering. It will only be used on some high-end nuclear submarines, other submarines need not dream about it because it consumes an astonishing amount of electricity, which submarines don't have. In conclusion, let me summarize today's video, hoping it provides you with some inspiration and value. As a seasoned blogger, I deeply understand the importance of submarine technology and its role in naval strategy. By deeply studying the complex process of torpedo launching, we can not only understand the critical technology behind submarines as one of the core weapons of naval forces, but also appreciate the continuous innovation and progress of military technology. The stealth and ambush capabilities of submarines make them indispensable in modern naval warfare, with torpedoes being one of their main striking tools, highlighting their importance. Our focus should not only be limited to the technical aspects but also extend to the impact of submarine technology development on national security and the international strategic landscape. By sharing this knowledge, I hope to raise more awareness of submarine technology and naval strategy, promote thinking and support for defense efforts, and contribute to maintaining world peace and security. In this era of rapid information dissemination, understanding submarine technology is not just for military enthusiasts, but also a responsibility for every citizen because the advancement of submarine technology not only concerns national security but also affects global peace. We should realize that technological progress brings challenges but also opportunities. By deeply understanding submarine technology, we can better grasp changes in the international situation, contribute our wisdom and strength to safeguarding national interests and regional stability, and advocate for humanitarianism and international cooperation in the development of submarine technology. Therefore, let's join hands and pay attention to the development of submarine technology, contributing to the construction of a peaceful, safe, and prosperous world. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. That's it for today's video, see you next time for more exciting content. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.